is true that sometimes it is difficult to manage anger. It is especially true for children and youth who are abused. They hardly had a chance to learn how to manage anger in an appropriate way under disadvantageous circumstances. And they often express their anger in an aggressive and destructive way. Kazu was not an exception. She was a 15-year-old girl who lived in a group home. While I was working at the group home as a youth care worker, she broke my bones twice. One time, she kicked me and I broke my breast bone. The other time, she threw a chair to me and I broke my backbone. If you imagine Kazu like a small wrestler, it's wrong. She was just a little bit taller than me and just a little bit bigger than me. The group home was located in a rural area surrounded by mountains and rice fields. There were not so many leisure activities for teenagers, and Kazu didn't have many friends. So she often hung out with staff. One night, she asked me to take her driving. I got my driver's license right before I got the job. I was a beginner driver, and I was still new in the area. While I was driving in the middle of rice fields, I got lost. And when I was trying to make a U-turn, I somehow brought the car in the position between a steel fence and a ditch. If I move the car forward, the car would scratch the fence. If I move the car backward, the car fall into the ditch. The more I steer the wheel, the more the car got stuck. It was already dark. There was nobody and no houses around there. I could see highway lights far, far, far away from here. To make matters worse, I forgot my cell phone. I imagined us staying overnight in the middle of rice fields. My boss would fire me by the time we get back to the group home. Kazu was annoyed by my driving skills and jumped out of the car. She said, get out of the car, Michael. Let's move the car. I didn't understand what she meant, but I got out of the car anyway. She then put her hand under the car and she started to lift the rear, car, the rear side of the car. Hang <laughs> It was not a Mini Cooper. It was a Toyota Camry. It was a sedan with four doors for five people. <laughs> what are you doing, my car? So I joined her. <laughs> of contribution was made by Kazu. <laughs> then Kazu realized the front corner of the car would hit the fence. She said, bend the fence! So there would be more space between car and the fence. She started to kick the fence. <laughs> come, 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 come! What are you doing, my Come! <laughs> Kazu, that would be vandalism. <laughs> then I realized there is nobody around us. So I joined her. <laughs> Again, 99% of contribution was made by Kazu. We repeated this several times. and we could finally free the car. Our hands are all greasy and dirty, and the fence was completely bent. 
But the car didn't get any damage at all. And we are free from the rice fields. And I could avoid being fired. <laughs> On the way back to the group home, Kazu asked me to drop by a corner store. I was waiting for her in the car while she was shopping. When she came back, she had two cans, cans of pop in her hands. She bought me a can of pop with her small allowance. We toasted our success in the car. I know it was just a regular Coke, but it tasted much more delicious than any other regular Coke. Later, she shifted to use her power in a more positive way. She became a high jump player at Paralympic and got a silver medal. She learned how to kick the ground instead of kicking people. <laughs> and whenever I see high jump games, I remember the taste of pop. Thank you.